Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26.1 RC, or Release Candidate. The Release Candidate is the final version released to developers and public beta testers before it releases to the public. If there's no additional issues, this will be the final release, but if there are additional issues, we'll see an RC2 later on. Now this came in at 8.52 gigabytes on the iPhone 17 Pro Max, and anytime there's an RC or a new beta, it has to reinstall the overall OS, so that's why it's such a large install. It was about the same size on the other devices here, where we had iOS 26.1 releases along with iPadOS, macOS, tvOS and HomePodOS, VisionOS, watchOS, all having RC versions with 26.1, as well as iOS 18.7.2 and iPadOS 18.7.2 RCs as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go down to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23B82. If there's no additional issues, this will be the final build released to the public. If there are additional issues, we'll probably have a new build number. Now there is no new modem update if you're coming from beta 4, so beta 4 to the RC, no change there, but if you're on iOS 26.0.1 going to the RC, there'll be a new build number there. Now also, when you first boot this up with 26.1 RC, you'll be greeted with the new hello screen with a couple of different options. Apple typically does this with major releases, so it's no surprise to see it here. As far as major features and changes, if we go into our settings and we go back to display and brightness, you may already be aware of this, but they've already updated the appearance here, as well as the appearance down under display zoom with the updated iOS 26 wallpaper, but also they've given us the option to adjust liquid glass. We have a clear and tinted option now, and if we take a look at this device, our notifications here are tinted on the right. They're clear, just along with things such as the mini player. So if I change this to tinted, you'll see that it changes as well. So again, if we go back, you'll see it tints the mini player. It also affects things throughout the OS, but not the control center, but it does affect things such as music. So there's some changes there. So if we scroll down, you'll see that it's more clear on the right and changes as you scroll based on what's in the background. The control center is also updated with a little bit different animation. It's now definitely more bouncy as you can see here. So there's a change there. And also if we go back into music, according to Apple's release notes in macOS, they didn't really give us many with iOS as you can see here. Their macOS release notes say that auto mix now works over AirPlay. So I would expect that works across all devices since it's also in their vision OS notes as well. There's also a new swipe gesture when you're in maybe listening to a song. So if we turn this down, we'll press play. You can swipe between tracks right here. So you can just swipe between. And if you want to go to the next, it works in sort of the mini player here as well. Just swipe between tracks and you can go to the next one and it works as you would expect. So that's a nice little touch to the updated gestures. And there's other changes throughout. Apple has also said in the macOS release and the other releases, again, no notes for iOS 26.1, but the FaceTime now improves audio quality even with low bandwidth conditions. So that's something that's been updated for this version. Also, they've enabled communication safety and web content filters to limit adult websites by default now on children from 13 to 17. Now you can adjust this of course, but if we go back out and maybe we go into our account here up at the top, and within screen time controls, if you have a child, you'll see communication safety. So those are on by default now. Again, you can disable this if you'd like to, but it's now on by default for children. Another update has to do with a feature on the lock screen that many people would like the option to turn off, and you now can. When you wake up your phone, you can swipe over to go into the camera. You can now disable this within the settings. If we go into settings, we go into our camera settings, swipe to the bottom, you'll see there's a new option for lock screen swipe to open camera. Swipe left on the lock screen to quickly access the camera. If we turn this off, when we wake the phone up, we can no longer slide over to the camera by accident. So if you want to turn that off, there's now an option. There's also another new option for phone calls. If we go into our settings and go under our phone settings, scroll down again, you'll see there's an option for haptics. It says play haptics when a call is connected or dropped. If you don't want it to play haptics every time you pick up a call or hang up on a call, it will turn this option off so it doesn't shake your phone every time. 
Also, if we go back into settings and this time, if we go under general within general, if we scroll down, you'll see there's a new option for local capture. This is something we had before, but now we can actually select the option of where to save it. So we can save in downloads or somewhere else. And we also have the option for audio only. It says add local capture to control center to record your own audio and video during a call to save and edit later. So this is an option we've had before in the control center, but we couldn't specify the locations we wanted. If we go back into photos and maybe this time we'll go into a video, they've changed the overall video player. It looks a little bit different and you'll see that it pops up, shows you the time as you scrub through it. So it's definitely a little bit of a change there. I actually like it. It makes it a little bit easier to move through the video if you want. Also, there's an option. If we go back to the main screen, press and hold, you'll see that they've changed around the way it looks. So now we have delete up at the top and they've changed around some of the menus as far as where they are. If you have to press on things. Now, if we go into settings, you may have already noticed this, but if we go under general, the headings for different things are now left justified. So there's an explanation here of what it is, such as general, and it's now left justified with its explanation. Also, if we go down to accessibility, you'll see the same thing and any menu that has in a description above it. So if we go into Apple intelligence and Siri, you'll see it here. And it now says beta again in beta four, we didn't have Apple intelligence and Siri in beta. And to go along with Apple intelligence, Apple has also added eight new languages. So if we go down to language here, you'll see there's a bunch of new options. So we have Turkish, Vietnamese, Thai, Swedish, Spanish in different locations, and you'll see all the different languages here. This also carries across to messages as well as the translate app. So if we go into translate, Within translate, you again have the same options. So we have Arabic, English, Chinese, Mandarin, simplified Chinese, Mandarin, traditional Dutch, English for the UK, French, German, Hindi, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Portuguese from Brazil, Russian, Spanish from Spain. And it says transcribe only Thai, Turkish, Ukrainian, and Vietnamese. So those are all the options now, and these should carry across to using these with AirPods as well. Also, another thing that's new is the Apple TV app. They've updated the app icon here. However, with the new naming scheme with Apple TV, it's no longer Apple TV plus. They haven't updated the menus here. Also something else to go along with liquid glass. If we touch and press here in different areas, the overall HDR effect has been minimized. So in some areas you'll see it a little bit, but in other areas like this one, you see it sort of disappears. If we go into messages, you'll see if I press in here, it does highlight a little bit. And I wish they'd give us an option for this since we have options now. So you can see it highlights, but it's not as vibrant as it once was. With the introduction of iPad OS 26.1, Apple removed slide over, but now it's back. So if you're using the windowed apps mode, and then maybe we'll go into Safari, maybe we'll open the app store. And if we want to put something into slide over, we press and hold the three dots in the upper left. Now we have an option to enter slide over. So maybe you want to use Apple here. We're on the website and we want to move this out of the way. You can do that. And now we have an arrow to the right to bring it back. So it's not exactly like it was before, but you now have that option press and hold, you can exit slide over. So that's a nice little change for those that were missing it. Now, as far as bugs and bug fixes so far, well, some things have been resolved. So if we go into the app library, you'll see if I tap, it goes right in and then we can search now before this was super delayed for me. It wasn't delayed for everyone, but some people found this to be a bit of a pain. So on some devices, it was delayed on my iPad. For example, it wasn't. Also, the wallpaper bug is not fixed. So you'll see how the wallpaper is nice and vibrant. Swipe home and it sort of dims or desaturates a little bit. I've changed all the settings here and it hasn't resolved it. So unfortunately, that's something that hasn't changed. Also, there's other issues people have been working on that seem to be a little bit smoother. The overall stuttering seems to be gone. But again, we'll have to test this for a few days and see if it returns by the weekend follow up video. So we'll talk about that then. As far as other bug fixes, well, Apple mentions quite a few in their public facing release notes. So if we take a look at that, you'll see they've resolved issues with airdrop background assets, game controller. We also have a new feature for developers with health kit. They've resolved some issues here with instruments also under keyboard. It says they fixed an issue where you are unable to select diacritical marks and character variants with keyboard. The base character is inserted instead of the intended variant. And I talked about that in previous videos as well. The lock screen, they've resolved issues where the device might sleep unexpectedly in certain apps. 
And there's still a couple known issues, but fairly minor, some Siri known issues as far as that goes. So questions related to news in Portuguese might fall back to web search or chat GPT. So there's still some issues they need to resolve. Whether or not we get an RC2 though is hard to say. As far as releases, well, based on iOS 26.1 RC2 being released, I would say that maybe Apple isn't going to release iOS 26.0.2. Maybe they decided to fix those issues and roll them into iOS 26.1. So that seems more likely at this point. And based on that, I would expect iOS 26.1's public release as soon as Monday. Typically we have an RC and then they push out the public release on Monday and then maybe even Tuesday or Wednesday we could see iOS 26.2 beta 1 with additional updates and changes. So that's what I would expect for now. And if you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.1 RC, well if you've been wanting to try iOS 26.1 as so far it's had better battery life and more stability, you can definitely try it now. Just keep in mind if you wanted to roll back you need a computer to do that. Other than that though, it seems to be pretty good and we'll talk more about that in the weekend follow-up video, but as far as overall performance, it's been smooth so far. No real hiccups throughout the video, no real issues. ProMotion is smooth. It's scrolling as you would expect. Things just feel generally very smooth and fast. Opening apps is quick, going into things such as music, everything in general just seems to be fast. When it comes to overall heat, it's staying nice and cool, of course with the latest version with the vapor chamber, that's pretty typical. And when it comes to battery life, well that will take a few days to notice, or measure. So if we take a look at settings, we'll go back here, we'll go into battery, and there was a little bit of stutter right there. But on this phone, you'll see battery health is only at 11 with 100% capacity, and we'll take a closer look at this a little bit later. But again, we're at 22% used, three hours and four minutes of screen active time. It's been on all day looking for updates and things like that, so it actually has been on and using very little battery. So overall, it's pretty good. With the iPad, let's take a look at that since I use that full time. So this is the M5 iPad Pro. If we take a look at battery usage, 23% today with 56 minutes screen on time. I did have to charge it as it was a little bit low this morning. And if we take a look at battery health, you'll see only four cycles, but I've had this since last Wednesday when it released and it's actually holding up quite well. I've never let it run all the way to zero. So it's doing quite well, no real issues here. But again, we'll talk about that more in the weekend follow-up to see what it's like after a few days. As far as overall storage, let's go ahead and take a look here. So if we go into general and then we go to iPhone storage, We'll wait for it to load here and then scroll to the bottom and you'll see the latest version. I'm taking up 20.52 gigabytes with the latest RC release compared to 20.34. And most of that seems to be really from Apple intelligence at 6.62 gigabytes compared to 6.67 gigabytes. And then basically the OS. So not a huge difference here. Very, very minimal. That's great to see. And of course, system data goes up and down as needed. Now I did run benchmarks and we've got 3,845 for single core, 9,687 for multi-core. For an initial benchmark, that's quite good. You'll see we did get a little bit higher than that on the weekend, but that's after running it multiple times and just running it right after installing it. Typically it's got to complete things in the background and then the, the overall scores will bump up a little bit. So again, we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. There will also be security updates. We'll talk about that, of course, once it releases, as Apple doesn't provide those until after it's released to the public. So hopefully we get some security updates. I'm sure we'll see something here, and maybe we'll get some additional notes as well. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Maybe some fixes to CarPlay they haven't mentioned, along with maybe notification fixes as well. So again, I'm waiting for that, but hopefully we'll see that before it releases to the public, maybe with an RC2. So that's everything so far with iOS 26.1 RC. Of course, we'll talk about any more features I find in the weekend follow-up video, and we'll talk about battery life and health and everything else. So let me know what you've found so far in the comments below. And if you've noticed anything different, if your experience has changed, I'd love to hear from you. Of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.